We have been officially censored by YouTube. They took down one of our videos for misinformation. But why are big media organizations not censored for misinformation in the same way? Is it because YouTube are part of the mainstream media now? <laughs> Hello there, you 5.9 million Awakening Wonders. Thank you for joining me on this voyage towards truth and freedom where we embrace the light within. We overlook the superficial differences between us to form new unitary forces. And if you're going to be serious about making change, you're going to have to make it with us over on Rumble where these videos are released first and where we stream every day live. One hour of content absolutely free at 5pm. If you watch it streamed live, there's not even even any adverts in it. There's a link in the description. Join us there every day. Now, we've got a fantastic story for you today about YouTube, about censorship, and about the future of this platform. Now, let's get into the story. Earlier this month, we did a video about the changing narratives around COVID, the pandemic, and COVID treatments, in which we cited information on official government websites, which we misinterpreted. I'll have to be careful talking about it now, because I don't want to make the same mistake that's had one of our videos pulled down and an official warning issued. The good news is we're moving to Rumble. All of our content is up on Rumble first and we'll be streaming on Rumble every day. We know that Rumble has a reputation in some quarters for having certain particular biases, biases that we are beyond. I'm interested in total transparent communication, empowerment of the audience, symbiotic two-way conversation, and attacking elite establishment, whether it's corporate or state, so that ordinary people can communicate freely beyond the limited remit of the mainstream media. That is why it's so convenient that this has happened at this time. We have been persecuted for misinformation, and it's right, we have a responsibility to make sure that the information we convey is absolutely Absolutely, 100% as accurate as it possibly could be. We made a mistake in saying that was now recommended by the NIH. What we should have said is they're trialing. That's what we should have said. You pointed that out to us. We made an apology video. We've taken that down as well. YouTube took down our original video. We've taken down the apology video because in case we reiterate the claim while apologizing for it, like if you said, I shouldn't have said that you look stupid in those shoes. You just said I look stupid in those shoes. You know, that kind of playground mad logic. So both of those videos you can watch right now on Rumble. They're still live on Rumble. That's the reason we're joining them because they're not going to censor our content. And by the way, just so you know, I don't want the right to say mean things about people. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in wars between different traditional or progressive factions. I support and love all of you. If you love Donald Trump, I love you. If you love Joe Biden, I love you. I want us to create new systems together. I don't believe these institutionalized systems at the level of the financial, governmental or media world are ever going to serve ordinary people. I believe we're at a point of crisis and things need to radically change fast. And I believe we'll be able to communicate our message more freely on Rumble. And this misinformation strike and takedown demonstrates exactly what it is we're talking about. We made an error, in my opinion, a relatively small error, and we're being penalized. For me, that looks like censorship. And the reason I think it looks like censorship is because there's mainstream media misinformation up all the time. Getting a hold of that information about whether you can get infected once you're vaccinated and potentially pass it to somebody else, that's really important. Well, today the CDC reported new data that shows that under real world conditions, not just in a lab, not just extrapolating from tiny numbers of test subjects. Yeah, it's not like they just test things on like eight mouses and then release a booster shot. They'd never do that. Most of you will be familiar by now with this famous MSNBC clip from Rachel Maddow, where Rachel says that if you take the vaccine, you cannot spread the virus. Now, I think most of us know now that that's not true, but that video is up on YouTube right now. You can go and look on, at it on YouTube. We'll put a link in the description. Although, in my opinion, that's misinformation because the truth is the vaccine does not stop you spreading the disease, does it? That was misinformation. Now, 
I'm not suggesting Rachel Maddow knew that at the time. I'm sure she was responding authentically to what she believed is the truth as a responsible good journalist. I don't think Rachel Maddow is a bad person. I'm saying that if it's misinformation for us to say on our channel that something was recommended by the NIH when it's been clinically trialled by the NIH and it's very difficult to envisage that there are potentially negative medical consequences, let alone fatalities that could come from that, then get that shit down because someone could watch this now. Oh, wow, it, it prevents it prevents the spread. It prevents the spread, right. Just go visit Grandma. Grandma! <laughs> I loved you, Granny. I loved you. That's dangerous misinformation. So we're asking, is there one standard for independent news broadcasters like us on our channel and a different standard for what we would call the mainstream media? Who funds the mainstream media again? Where do they get their information? Is it possible that YouTube has been colonized? Is it possible that YouTube that began as a channel with the best intentions in the world, providing content creators the opportunity to put stuff out there, find their audience, be engaged with a discourse with their audience, a grand ambition. But is it possible that a company ultimately owned by Alphabet now dances to the tune of the mainstream media, dances to the tune of the establishment? Certainly in this instance, it would seem like it. Otherwise, how do you make sense of some misinformation being allowed, propagated, profligate misinformation, and other misinformation, and we'll accept it's misinformation, we made a mistake being censored. That is not neutrality. That is not a reliable community guideline. That is a private company acting upon certain biases, I would say. Just to assure you that that's not misinformation, have a listen to this. A fair analysis of the 100 most subscribed YouTube channels worldwide found that the majority of top news channels on the platform are now not independent. 83 of the top 100 YouTube news channels are corporate media, meaning owned and funded by large companies or conglomerates. You know what that means. You know that that means that their shareholders are going to belong to groups like Vanguard and BlackRock, that their advertising is going to come from Big Pharma, Big Food, Big Tech. You know what that means. It's one centralized organization. For a while, and I still hope it's possibly true, I believe that YouTube was an opportunity for us to openly communicate. If community guidelines are there to protect people, I 100% obviously endorse that. I don't think people should be in danger. And I would even agree that you shouldn't be able to use free speech to hurt people's feelings. I hope we never do that on this channel. We're about consolidation, bringing people together, recognising we have more in common with one another than ever could separate us so that we can confront establishment elite power. And I've got the terrible feeling that we're confronting establishment elite power right now. Only four of the top 100 top news channels are independently run. While YouTube offers the possibility for independent sites to reach wider audiences, its most subscribed news channels remain largely reflective of the corporate biases of the global media landscape as a whole. Many of your favourite content creators will have been censored. Let us know in the chat in the comments who you've noticed being censored. Here's a really great example. Russia Today were brought down with journalists like Pulitzer Prize winner Chris Hedges censored. When the conflict between Ukraine and Russia began, all of Russia Today's content was taken down, including Chris Hedges' work, which includes did interviews with people like Slavoj Žižek and Edward Snowden, people that are providing important voices and insights. You weren't interviewing people that are going, Russia's great, and I've liked Putin, he should be able to poison whoever he wants, you should be able to invade Ukraine if you want, who cares? That wasn't the content, it's more nuanced than that, it's more complicated than that. Of course you can find legitimate reasons to censor anybody. But ultimately, what principles are being followed here? If YouTube has indeed been co-opted by mainstream media corporatism, you can bet your bottom dollar and your top dollar that the principles that are being used here are in the service of establishment elite. Why are independent channels being attacked, censored and brought down, while mainstream media channels are being pushed, highlighted and celebrated as you know them, we made a video in which we made a mistake when it comes to the So we made another video apologising for that mistake. I would have thought that YouTube would have seen the apology as addressing the problem, but that's not how they saw it. They removed the original video saying it violates YouTube's community guidelines pertaining to COVID-19's medical misinformation. As a result, a strike has been applied to the channel, which has used our channel's lifetime warning. That's it, for a lifetime, one warning. Doesn't that sound like the language of tyranny to you? You get 
one warning. According to YouTube, the next time your content is found to violate the community guidelines. Community guidelines, like it's coming from like a little old lady and someone that works in the oh, I've been in this community making sipping whiskey since I was a boy. I started YouTube with just using a wooden internet with my dad. We whittled an internet using sticks. Not only are the vaccines for those folks, thousands of them, keeping those people from getting sick from COVID themselves. Those vaccines are also highly effective at preventing those people from getting infected, even with non-symptomatic infection. And if you are not infected, you can't give it to anybody else. Phew, even non-symptomatic. Is there anyone left in the world that doesn't believe that's misinformation right now? Is there any? Let me know in the comments if you go, that's good, reliable information from MSNBC. Like, subscribe, spread that around. If you are not infected, you can't give it to anybody else. Look at the confidence of that. We said, Oh, look, it appears on the NIH website. It really does. Have a look for yourself. That's what it looks like. I hope that doesn't get us banned again. But that is, look at the confidence of Rachel Maddow. Again, I know some of you don't like Rachel Maddow and have got political reasons for that. That's not my view. I think Rachel Maddow is a lovely person, as far as I know. That, though, is misinformation, isn't it? What this means is that we can get there with vaccines. We can end this thing. I mean, that's... In retrospect, propaganda, isn't it? That should be taken down. I would like to ask YouTube community guidelines, that lovely old community of little old ladies and people from all around the world all holding hands, wearing national dress in their different countries. Why is that video still up? Isn't that misinformation? What do you think in your community? What do you think on your independent news channel? Why are certain channels being persecuted for violations and others not? What is the bias that's at play here? Instead of the virus being able to hop from person to person to person to person, spreading and spreading, sickening some of them, but not all of them, and the ones that it doesn't sicken don't know they have it, and then they give it to even more people. I'm sure Rachel Maddow believed that then. I'm sure MSNBC believed that then. I'm sure YouTube believed that then. But does anybody believe that now? Isn't that cast iron, rock solid misinformation that should be taken down immediately? So why is MSNBC's information allowed to flourish, gain likes, gain ad revenue, reach more and more people when this rather, in my view, marginal, minor piece of misinformation for which we apologise when you were kind enough to point out the indiscrepancies. Why has that resulted in a lifetime warning? Should there be a warning for MSNBC? Now we know that the vaccines work well enough that the virus stops with every vaccinated person. That's the money shot, you would say, huh? The vaccine stops. Is that not misinformation? Is that not potentially more dangerous than misinterpreting a rather opaque and confusing website? Have a look for yourself. Tell me what you think is more likely to result in even just coronavirus infection. You can decide for yourself. Have a look at both those controversial videos over at Rumble, a platform that's guaranteed us the right to communicate freely and openly with you. And that's the main thing, the only thing we're interested in. A vaccinated person gets exposed to the virus. The virus does not infect them. There we go. That's the end of that virus. And it's not just Rachel Maddow. Fauci said similar things. Biden said similar things. Probably Trump said similar things. From our perspective, we got no ax to grind. It's a conversation. Science evolves all of the time. Information alters all of the time. Narratives change. What you have to have, therefore, is clear principles, transparency, empowerment, inclusivity. These are the principles that underwrite our channel. I cannot use a vaccinated person as a host to go get more people. Fucking hell! She got out of her way to, to really convince you. It's almost like MSNBC gets significant advertising revenue from Pfizer. What? I cannot use a vaccinated person as a host to go get more people. And I'm, again, I'm being glib there. But the fact that MSNBC do get a significant amount of advertising revenue from Big Pharma shows you that when they're objectively, apparently as best they can, approaching a subject like this, that is going to be a factor, isn't it? You know that the pharmaceutical industry is the biggest revenue generator 
for mainstream media. Now the mainstream media has moved into the big tech space. So a once free space is now similarly co-opted by the corporate agenda. It's a mainstream media space now. It's a big pharma space now. It's a big food space now. If you want to communicate freely and openly, you have to support independent media channels. I'm not saying just ours. There are loads of other good independent media providers. That means the vaccines will get us to the end of this if we just go fast enough to get the whole population vaccinated. Okay, okay, it's just get one back. And that's still not misinformation. It's huge news. <laughs> it's fake news, baby. We have had to move to Rumble to assure that we are not censored further. We will continue to upload on YouTube for as long as they allow us, but we would prefer you join us on Rumble every day, streaming live for one hour. Our videos are all available there. The stuff that's been dragged off by YouTube, the stuff that we've removed in order to protect the channel, having had a lifetime warning, that's still up there for you to watch right now. We pledge to you that we will continue to tell the truth as best we understand it, and when we make mistakes, promptly admit it, so that together we can move towards something better. It's not just big tech, it's not just the state, it's not just the corporate world, it's not just the corrupt mainstream media. These these four things, though, in conjunction mean it's very difficult for us to build new systems, to create new narratives, and we must do it. We have to do it. That is why it's absolutely imperative that you join us on Rumble, that you continue to tell us when we've made mistakes so that we can adapt to you. Our principles are inclusivity, transparency, and to challenge elite power wherever we see it. And unfortunately, I think we're seeing it on YouTube now, but that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments in the chat below if you enjoyed this video. You know, for a while, post it around to other people, give it a thumbs up like that matters. Watch one of these two things, sign up to our mailing list and join us over on Rumble every single day where we will communicate openly with you and we will listen to you live in the chat. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. We love you. Stay free.